What's up, people? This is Nature Girl 30 here, and this is another mini Q&A number six. I want to thank everybody for sending me questions, and if you do have any questions to send me, please send it to my Nature Girl 30 YouTube inbox. Um, that's pretty much the easiest way to, for, um, for me to actually sort these things out and be able to organize them on my handy-dandy tablet here. But anyway, um, let's get started with my first question. My first question comes from Nintendo Fanboy1988. His question for me is, what wrestling games have you played in the early 90s and late 90s, and which uh, are your favorites and least favorites? I'm going to be real. The only one that I've ever played was WWE Attitude. It was a lot easier to play. It was a real easy pickup for those that were new, like I was at the time. I had a lot of fun with the entire roster, and it, it, you just had a blast playing. But the thing is, as time went on, wrestling games became a lot more complicated because of the button configurations. There was just far too much, it was far too technical to get into it. It was like the Madden of wrestling, and it just got really confusing and annoying, and it just wasn't fun to play for me. But I haven't had a chance to try WWE 12 as well as 13, and from what I'm hearing, the roster is excellent, and maybe it'll be an easy pickup. I actually had a chance to play Raw vs. SmackDown 2011, I think it was 2011, but it just really wasn't all that fun for me, and it was far too many bugs. But anyway, if I have a chance to actually play WWE 13, I'll definitely play it and let you guys know what I think about it. But um, moving on to the second question, what do you think about early 90s Undertaker? The Undertaker is larger than life in itself. I mean, the fact is I actually had a chance to see him live on Raw and on SmackDown during that time, and the guy is intimidating. I'm sorry. The character alone can literally just bring fear in your heart and literally make your entire skin turn white. I didn't really turn white, but I know that I literally just wanted to pee on myself, literally staring at a guy who was seven feet tall and just completely intimidating coming out in the ring. And I mean, it, it was scary. And that is how powerful The Undertaker is. And I love the 90s Undertaker and not the whole American Badass thing, but actually vintage Undertaker. I will forever love that guy. But anyway, moving on from there. This is a question that comes from my dear friend, NJ17. Thank you so much again. And I know I thank you about a thousand times, but I'm going I'm, I'm to be real. I love that icon. Seriously, I really do. And I never thought I would have one for a Q&A. But again, thanks, NJ. And this is, my, this is his question for me. Um, name your three top fave movies. And what do you do when you come across a bad situation? Um, my three fave movies so far, not in any particular order, is, and I know it's the, number three is the Saw series. Number two is Die Hard. And my number one is Demolition Man. And honestly, I love the Saw series because it honestly makes you think. There was a method to Jim, Jigsaw's madness, and that was the scary part. The fact that you honestly can empathize with him as well as literally understand why he did what he did, even though it was psychotic and he was murdering people, even though he abhors murder, but he put people in a situation to where they are actually the cause of their own actions. And that was the scary part for me. I'm, I'm an analytical thinker. I'm sorry. I think far too much. But that was just a, just a flat-out blast fest. I mean, seriously, when you just want to see people get shot up at explosions... That is my guilty pleasure. I love Die Hard. And Demolition Man is a true definition of what would happen if nerds ran the world. Seriously. And that's why I loved it. <laughs> For that reason. Except I am not, by any freaking means, using three seashells to go to the bathroom. Sorry. I would have to literally punch a guy if they forced me to do that. Yeah, even though I don't really like to fight. But anyway, um... What would I do in a bad situation if I come across one? Um, I try to make the best of every situation, even if it is bad, or even if it is to the point where, you know, I don't know which direction to go. I try to make up the best out of a bad situation. I try, like, for example, if it's to the point where if I lose, let's say to the point where if I end up going to a, a party that is completely terrible, I try to make the best out of it by being as goofy as I possibly can. Or if I actually lose tickets to go to an event or leave them at home, I try to at least make the best out of a situation. Like, for example, if I can't get into a football game or if I can't get into a wrestling match, I try to make the best of the bad situation outside. 
And, you know, I'm, that's just the type of person that I am. If I don't have to go to a wrestling match, I will go all the way back home and get those tickets and come back. That's how I am. But, um, but anyway, um, let's move on to the next question. Thank you so much, NJ. And thank you so much, uh, Nintendo Fanboy um, 1988. Okay. Let's move on to Final Limits. And he has three questions for me. If you're he, if you're she, I apologize. But um, do you work out in the gym or at home or at all? Um, my job is pretty physically taxing sometimes, but I have to keep my body in shape. So what I do is that there are sometimes that I actually do use my connect when it's like when the weather is not all that great outside. But when it is, especially during the season, I honestly like to jog. I actually start taking up jogging. It's really refreshing, especially jogging outside. I really do like being outdoors. This is the type of person I am, a very outdoorsy person. So I don't like being in a gym cooped up, and especially it's intimidating going to certain gyms, having people stare at you all the time. But honestly, if I actually do go to a gym, I usually go on a treadmill, I work out with weights, I actually try to build up more endurance as well as try to shape my body and, you know, try to take better care of myself. And that's what I'll do if I have to go to a gym. But if I don't, I just try to stay away from gyms. I just don't like gyms that often. It just seems like a meat fest. But um, anyway, um, what are your thoughts about Waylon Mercy? Um, well, the mercy was way before my time during that time when he was in WWF. I believe that he was around 1984 to 1988. I got into it at 1986. So I don't really know much about him when he, when he was in the WWF. I didn't really watch WCW at the time until the Monday night wars. And that was when he left or before the Monday night wars actually came to be. So honestly, I really don't have anything to say about that. And I really apologize for that. Um, what are the worst nightmares you ever had in your life? Um, I know that when I was about 14 years old, I had 12 dreams about being kidnapped by a guy named Carmen in a red Mazda RX-7, and he kidnapped me and took me to Cape Canaveral. I had 12 dreams about that, and it terrified me. It, only ter it also terrified my mom. She literally found a way to actually take me, um, out of school and took me all the way to Tennessee. She made sh and I actually knew the date when I was going to be kidnapped, and that was the scary part. And when I told her about it, she got so scared that she took me to Tennessee and kept me there for a week. Um, but yeah, that was that was one of the scariest nightmares. This this one nightmare that is so bad that I literally can't even mention it. I had to pray to God about that because I had two horrible nightmares about it, which terrified me. And I still to this day can't even talk about it. I don't think I've told anyone what it is, and I don't think I even want to bring it back up. It's just far too scary. But, um, but thank you so much for your question, Final Limits, and um, please send more. Okay, the final question of this Q&A is going to be from Largest85, and he actually sent me four. Um, what, uh, what, how would you react if you saw a Divas match when they both got sick and vomited buckets in the ring all over themselves and still continue to match? I know this is a sick question, but I dreamt about that. Um... Okay, that's gross. <laughs> I'm sorry, dude, but that's nasty. Um, so I I really wouldn't even watch that. Like straight up, I really wouldn't watch that. Um, what are your favorite fighting games and the characters of those games? Okay. Um, I love fighting games. Like I love everything about fighting games. My 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 most favorite fighting game genre has to be Mortal Kombat. I was a fan from the first Mortal Kombat all the way up to Mortal Kombat 2. Mortal Kombat 3 wasn't bad, but the this this um, generation's Mortal Kombat, the one that's on um, 360, is phenomenal. I love it. The gore, the, the straight-up fatalities. Oh, my word. I like that game so much. My favorite character to play on that game happens to be Baraka. And Cyrax. Like, I love Cyrax because Cyrax can pull out some sick combos. And Baraka and the Blades, I'm sorry. The Chop Chop, straight up awesomeness. And they do have probably the sickest, well, not as sick as Noob Cybot, but honestly, they have some really. Baraka has a sick fatality. I'm sorry, he really does. It's awesome. So, yeah, those are my two favorite characters to actually play with. Okay, um, have you ever gotten a fight in your life? Yeah, I have. Um, I'm the type of person that really don't like to fight because I'm not really afraid of being hit. I'm afraid of what I'm going to do to the person if they hit me back. And that's my biggest fear. I don't want to black out and, like, literally get up out of my blackout and see, like, a big puddle of mess on the ground. I don't want to see that. So, um, so that's why I try to stay away from fights. 
But the 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 first fight I'd ever had, I think I was like about maybe five. Uh, no, I think I was like seven years old, and there was a chick named Nikki that just kept picking on me for no apparent reason. And then all of a sudden, she knocked me down to where I scratched my stomach, and I got so mad at her to where when she she knocked me off of a saw, a seesaw. So when she got on the seesaw, I actually jumped from a high point. Like a, the sandbox was pretty high up, so I jumped from the sandbox, uh, all the top of the wall of the sandbox, all the way down the seesaw and catapulted her at least ten feet across the entire playground. I got in trouble for the rest of the day, but it was satisfying to see her fly. And that was pretty much the first fight I ever had. Um, but, okay. Moving on to your final question for me is, what if The Rock never showed up for his match against Cena at Mania, and how would you react and everyone else react? Um, honestly, I highly doubt that John Cena would ever, 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 ever miss a match. Like, I don't think that he ever would. It's just he has a reputation uh, to uphold, and I doubt that he would ever do that. If he didn't show up, that would be a first. But if he didn't, I would pretty much be more interested in the reaction that Vince McMahon would have to try to clean up the mess that he that he left behind. That just would be me. There will be a lot of fans that will be really, really pissed off. But me, I would just like to see the whole, the, how they would actually try to put everything together. That's just me. I would actually love to see that. But thank you so much for your questions, guys. If you have any more questions for me, please leave them in um, either in the comment section below or more than likely, I would actually like, it, like you to send it to my YouTube inbox because it will be really easy for me to actually categorize everything. So send it to my um, YouTube inbox, and thank you guys so much for your questions. This is Nature Girl 30 signing off. Peace out. Later.